Melissa Tingley blogs at At Home in the World and at Artifactual Blog. She is a writer and instructional designer. And one truth about her is she is a 10-year veteran of her local school board. She is apparently also a saint. <laughs> the story she's reading was published at the broadside. There is something seductive about holding a gun, the way it fits in your hands and gives you the illusion of control. There's power there, very personal power, and I have felt it. If you told me I would ever find myself at a shooting range holding some kind of Glock, I would have done far more than laugh at you. I was vehemently anti-gun, and shooting was not something I could ever imagine. Yet there I was at the insistence of a friend who felt I should know how to defend myself from millennium wackos and other ill-intentioned people that I might encounter in the year 2000. He had recently purchased two guns to protect his home and his bank in case the power went out and the ATM stopped working on New Year's Day. I didn't share his fears, but the idea of knowing how to handle a gun in an emergency appealed to me, and so I took him up on his offer to teach me. The guns came in slick, miniature briefcases like something out of a spy movie. My friend brought his own targets that looked exactly as they do in cop shows. If the plastic eye protection and the giant ear protection spoiled the effect, I could ignore them because the gun felt solid and heavy in my hand, and I was ready. The first shot missed completely. Even with my ears covered, it was so much louder than I expected. The force was so great, greater than such a small machine should give off, and some adjustment was needed. After the first two shots, my aim was better, much better. Ultimately, I hit the target in the head twice. My friend was pleased, proud even, and he reeled the target back for me to admire my handiwork. And I burst into tears. I could never imagine using that kind of force on another living thing, knowing I could end a life. Here I was, standing at a pockmarked paper target, and all I could think of was the person on the other side of that gun who might not ever have another day on this earth. I knew if I ever found myself in the situation, I would spend the rest of my life wanting to take back that moment, no matter what. But now I understand that power. On Friday afternoon, as we discussed the unspeakable massacre at Sandy Hook, I found myself explaining the constitutional origins of our nation's gun culture to a coworker from another country. But our national love affair with guns is not really about history or freedom. It is about the personal appeal of the power of a gun and all the money there is to be made from those who enjoy it. For the next several days or weeks, we will have to endure gun rights supporters maintaining that there is nothing to be done by, about gun violence except more guns. They will suggest that you can't control for the mentally ill and the presence of evil. They will advocate for things like arming teachers and bringing prayer back into the schools. They will use any tactic to avoid admitting an addiction to that power. Let's be clear. Evil is just an excuse. This is not about taking God out of our schools. It is about taking too much money out of our mental health budgets. It is about letting too many guns out on our streets and into our homes. Mostly, though, it is about a steadfast refusal to address the reason anyone buys a gun in the first place, a willingness to kill, and the desire to have the ultimate power over a living being. Our country has confronted other abuses of personal power in the past, slavery, child abuse, sexual molestation, discrimination, rape. In every case, not only have we legislated these issues, we changed the conversation about them. There is much work to be done on many of these issues, but with 20 tiny school children going to their graves this week, 
it is past time to add civilian gun ownership to that list. Thank you.